Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first day of the London Book Fair and to English Pen Cafe, which is the most civilized spot, I think, in all the book fair. Um, it's my very great privilege and honor to be interviewing Oya Baider this morning. Um, her first novel, God Forgot His Children, was written while she was still a schoolgirl. Um, she hand wrote it on yellowing paper and sent it into um, Harriet, the, the big national newspaper, and it was published to some sensation. Um, a second novel followed not long after, while she was studying sociology at Istanbul University. Um, but not long after, she stopped writing fiction and concentrated on academic research around the socio-political structures within Turkey. She was arrested and dismissed from her post as a lecturer at Istanbul University for the crime of membership of the Turkish Teachers Trade Union and the Turkish Labour Party. After her release, she worked as a columnist until the 1980 coup d'etat, at which point she was forced into exile in Germany. She returned to fiction in the early 90s to overcome the depression she was experiencing after witnessing the collapse of socialist practice. Since then, she has published a number of short stories and novels for which she's won numerous awards. She currently lives in Turkey, um, and I'm here to talk to her about um, her novel, The Lost Word, and generally about, about writing, about Turkey, about free expression. So mm -hmm. welcome to the London Book Fair. Thank you. I started out life wanting to be a writer, and that was my ambition, but being a young person in Turkey in the 1960s, it was unavoidable that um, I became involved in left-wing politics. You felt like you had to get involved. Devrimciliğin dışında biz devrimcilik derdik, sosyalist siyaset demeyiz. Devrimci hareketin dışında kalmak adeta mümkün değildi ve part-time devrimcilik olamazdı. Ben de her şeyi bıraktım ve siyaset, sol siyaset, sosyalist siyasete yaptım. We saw ourselves very much as revolutionaries and it was simply not possible to be a part-time revolutionary. You felt that you had to give it everything. So I gave up everything and um, went into the uh, left-wing politics. I keep returning to Omar, Omar because he is the novelist in there, of course. But there's one point when he, um, he realizes he must write the story of real people and not the unnatural fiction that the literature market operating according to supply and demand requires. I wonder whether you feel in, in Turkey that writing is becoming more dictated by the market, by supply and demand, and that there's a sort of unnatural fiction that is arising as a result. Yeah. Bu sadece Türkiye'nin değil dünyada bir sorun. That's a problem for the whole world, not mm -hmm. just for Turkey. Mm -hmm. Özellikle romanda belli klişeler, belli kalıplar üzerinden yazan, be, e, okunan bestsellerler mm -hmm. var. There are, uh, in, in, especially in the novel uh, genre, there are, there are lots of clichés and formats that are used to create bestsellers. Mm -hmm. e, bunun başlıca nedeni sanıyorum, edebiyatın da artık kapitalist dünyada her şey gibi bir meta haline gelmiş meta olması. Haline? E, met, bir mal, mm. bir mal haline gelmiş I think gelmiş the reason olması. for that is that, that uh, uh, that literature, like everything else in the capitalist world, has become a product and a sort of a material thing. Buna karşı durmak zor. Ama Türkiye için bir şey söylemek istiyorum. Türkiye'de yine de gerçekten bunu şimdi Türkiye konuk ülke olduğu için söylemiyorum. Dışarıda tanınmayan çok çeşitliliği olan ve kendini Piyasaya, pazara kaptırmamış olan, yani hmm. mutlaka pazar için üretim yapayım, çok böyle bir edebiyat var ve epeyce hmm. güçlü bir edebiyat. Hmm. I would like to say that uh, this, and I'm not just saying it because Turkey is the market-focused country this year, but I do think that there's a very wide and a very deep and a very, very varied uh, uh, literature in Turkey mm -hmm. that, that is there to be discovered, and it's not just a, a one-trick pony. Yes. We might all be happy if it said Turkey literature focus instead of Turkey market focus. Ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, But I must also say that we are suspicious. We are, we are, uh, we, we, we do have our suspicions and our, our fears, um, because we would like to think that um, with the democratization of Turkey, you know, will this all sort of go forward and continue to improve, um, or will we then have, will we have uh, our dreams be broken once again? Well, I'm going to ask one final question because I'm conscious we there are people here who may have questions. Um, 
and it's to do with, with that idea of, of hope in the future. There is um, the point when Elif and Omar return from Germany to Turkey, they, there's this line, they hadn't yet given up hope for life, the world, their country, and mankind. We were young. Flames hadn't yet begun to envelop the smoldering world. Um, and there is, there is a strong sense in the book about, on one hand, f these flames, and on the other hand, hope. Um, and I wonder particularly, because we are English pen, um, how, what your thoughts are on the state of free freedom of expression in Turkey? I mean, just about an hour ago, we received the news that the composer Fazal Say has been um, convicted to a 10-month suspended sentence for um, religious offense. So I wonder whether you would say something on freedom of expression in Turkey. Türkiye'de ifade özgürlüğü her zaman bir sorun oldu. Yani benim kuşağımdan öncekilerde de bir sorundu. Um, freedom of expression has always been a problem in Turkey, uh, not just for my generation, but for the generation before me as well. E, sadece hangi konularda e, özgürlüğün kısıtlanacağı değişti. The only thing that has changed is on which subjects they have, um, they have been more sensorial really. Her zaman şu aynı kaldı. Resmi ideoloji ya da hükümetin, devletin o andaki e, ideolojisi, siyaseti ona aykırı söz söylemek her zaman e, bir sorundu. The only thing that has always remained the same is that any time we try and say anything that is slightly outside the ideological line of the current of of the, of the state, you, you, that's when you get into trouble every time. That has not changed. Şöyle bir örnek vereyim. Şunu göstermek için bazı şeylerin daha iyi gittiğini de söyleyebilirim. I'll give you an example now just to show you that some things have actually got a bit better. Hmm. 1976 yılında Türkiye halkları diye yazdığım için halkları, halk hmm. değil halkları hmm. diye yazdığım için 7,5 yıl hapse mahkum oldum. In 1976 um, Yet yeah, you kill me. Yeah, I, I was in yeah, 1976 I was I was threatened with seven and a half years in prison for writing the word Turkish peoples rather than Turkish people. Ama yanlış anlaşılmadın yatmadım çünkü e, o karar e, bittiğinde, kesinleştiğinde ben kaçmıştım zaten. But I'd like you to understand that I didn't actually um, go down for that. I didn't actually have to go to prison for that because by the time the actual final uh, uh, judgment came out, I had already left the country. <gülüyor> e, şimdi de sorunlarımız hala var. Ama mesela Kürt sorununda çok daha rahat yazıyoruz. Hmm. Her şeyi yazıp çiziyoruz. Uh, we, we do still have an awful lot of problems, but I can say that it is at least easier now to write about the Kurdish situation. Ama yasalar öyle bir şekilde ki mesela Ermeni meselesinde Ermeni soykırımı ve benzer şeylerde hayır burada daha büyük güçlükler var. Göze alıp yine yazıyoruz ama daha büyük güçlükler hmm. var. But there are, there are stronger forces against you having you writing for example about the Armenian um, genocide that that's you're not allowed to you still encounter a lot of um, restrictions hmm. when you try to write about that. E, hükümetin eleştirilmesi doğrudan bir ee, eskisi gibi bir hapis cezasıyla falan sonuçlanmayabiliyor ama hmm. ama It, mesela yeah. gazeteciyseniz işinizi kaybetmenizle sonuçlanabiliyor. Hmm. For example these days it may if you criticize the state you may not uh, go to prison for it but you certainly would lose your job as a journalist. I've got uh, books in 23 different countries but I've only had one book published in the UK. Ve şey söyleyeyim yani ilgililer mi bilmiyorum ama çeviri için İngilizce şart. Yani birçok ülke doğrudan İngilizcesinden çeviriyor. Yani Hindistan'dan Çin'e kadar İngilizcesinden çeviriyorlar. Onun için eğer çevrilmek isteniyorsa yani Türk edebiyatının çevrilmesi isteniyorsa İngilizce çeviri şart oluyor. Uh, I'd like to say that English translation is an absolute must uh, because from the English translation then you will get the other translations into, uh, for example, Indian or Chinese, etc. But um, it is an absolute must in the, in, in the publishing world at the moment that you get your book translated into English first. Şimdi yani Berlin duvarın yakılmasına yani o zaman da üzüldünüz. Şimdi aynı aynı şey, aynı derecede mi üzülüyor musunuz? Ben ben duvarın yapılmasına da üzülmüştüm. I'm, I get upset that the wall was built as well. Hmm. Duvar yapıldığında 
e, bu bana burada yanlış bir şey var duygusu vermişti. When, when, the, when the wall was erected, I had this feeling like uh, there's the something really, really bad is going on here. Ve duvarı rasyonalize, duvarı haklı göstermek için söylenenler beni tatmin etmemişti. And I didn't ama like iyi de bir komünistim ama. I didn't like the fact that people were trying to justify the reasons for the wall. I was a really good communist. <laughs> Ama duvarın yıkılması bir semboldü. Asıl üzüntü veren oydu. Yani kötü bir şeydi. Ama o sosyalizmin başarısızlığının sembolüydü mm-hmm. yıkılması. O yüzden çok üzüntü. The reason I got very upset when the wall was pulled down, of course, is because it was a symbol of um, of, of, of, of the failure of, of, of socialism. E, yıkılması daha mı iyi oldu? Evet, yine de yıkılması daha iyi oldu. Was it better that it was pulled down? Yes, of course it was still better that it was pulled down. Çünkü inanıyorum ki belki kısa zamanda değil ama uzun zamanda yapılan bütün hatalar görülerek insanlık adı sosyalizm olmasa da başka bir yere gelebilecek daha özgürlükçü, daha adaletli bir dünya kurulabilir. Because I think that in, if, if when the wall was pulled down, if things can progress and become not just in the name of socialism, but if, if things can progress and become fairer and become fairer for everybody, that of course is the greatest progress.